Crafty Crafty, please do hit that subscribe button below and make sure that you also click on the little bell to turn your notifications on. It will let you know every time I upload a new tutorial. It's completely free to subscribe and it's well worth doing. So today we're going to go through how you use HTV. We're going to start right at the beginning because there's lots of new people with lots of new machines and they've never used HDV before or iron on they're the same thing heat transfer vinyl and iron on is the same thing we're just going to go through the basics so I've got an image here and I've already ungrouped it and the only things I want to change is I want to get rid of the bow so I'm just going to hide that or you can delete it it's up to you and then with the writing, I don't want that writing, I want my own. So I'm just going to go to text, I'm going to come to fonts and I'm going to search for Samantha. And my top line, I'm going to put Fowlers. And then I'm just going to bring my letter spacing in so that they overlap. Now you can see with the letter spacing, some of them are still not touching and some of them have overlapped completely. So I'm just going to go to advanced and ungroup to letters and I'm then just going to manually move them. Once I'm happy, I'm just going to highlight and I'm going to weld them. When you're working, okay, so sometimes you'll see that this happens. So we're just going to go back to undo. And then we're just going to move them slightly. Sometimes it's just that they're overlapping too much and you can then just adjust it. And then when you go back and you weld, you'll see that it's no longer black in there. It's important when you're working with cursive letters, if you ungroup them or you move them slightly, you do want to make sure that they are welded because you want them to cut out as one continuous piece. I'm just going to get my second line of text and I'm just going to put warrior and this time I don't want to use Samantha I want to use a different font so I'm just going to close that down I'm just going to find a font that I'm happy with so I've chosen the font agency FB and I'm just going to move that over there I can then get rid of the one that came with the design and then just going to size these up so that they are approximately the same size and they look like they go together. Then all I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight them both. I'm going to go to align and I'm going to center horizontally and this will then allow them to be centered. I'm then going to weld them and I can then bring them over to her arm area and just work out where I want them to sit and I can also resize it as well. So you can see that I've added some text in and I've also made sure that my height and my width are where I want them. So everything's fine with the image. You can see I've used different colors. So I'm then going to go to make it. So one of the most important things when you're working with HTV is you need to mirror and you need to mirror at this point. So you can see here it says mirror and there's a slider. You're going to move that slider across and you can see it's completely flipped your image. You want to do this for every single one of your mats. It's really, really important that you mirror everything if you're working with HTV. So we're going to go to continue. So there are so many different types of iron on now. There's foil, there's holographic, there's glitter, there's normal. You can see here we've got a normal iron on setting. If we go to browse all materials, and we go down to iron on, you'll see there's flocked, foil, glitter, heat transfer, holographic, normal iron on, holographic sparkle, patterned, printable, dark, printable light, there's sport flex, there's transfer sheet as well. And there's other ones in between that that you'll need to kind of work out what your cut setting is. There are so many different HTVs on the market now. I'm going to use different HTVs and I will tell you when I'm cutting them what setting I'm going to cut them on. So we can then choose each of those between each of our mats. 
every time you're going to change your HTV, so for example, you're going to change from foil to holographic, you need to make sure that you come in and you change your cut setting as well. It's really, really important that you do that. If you're going to change your HTV on your mat, then you need to change the cut setting in Design Space. So I've got several different HTVs here. This first one is a rose gold foil from craftycutter.co.uk and I cut this on the setting foil iron on. This is a rose gold HTV. I've got this one from craftblanksuk.com and I cut this on the iron on setting. So this is a pink metallic and this is from a rainbow of stitches.co.uk. Believe it or not, I actually cut this on the glitter iron on setting. I find it works really well with this metallic brand. So I use glitter iron on for this one. This is a gold metallic, again from a rainbow of stitches.co.uk. And again, I cut it on the glitter iron on setting. Sometimes they just take settings that we wouldn't think they would. So it's always worth doing a test cut. So this is a glitter HTV and this is the colour rosy gold. This is from craftblanksuk.com and I cut this on the glitter iron on setting. I have a green glitter HTV. This is from craftycutter.co.uk and I cut this on the glitter iron on setting. I have a red glitter HTV again from craftycutter.co.uk and again I cut this on the glitter iron on setting. And finally I have a plain purple HTV, I get this from craftycutter.co.uk and I cut this on the iron on setting. So all HTV has a shiny side and a matte side, the matte side is almost waxy. You'll see with glitter there is a shiny side and there is a matte waxy side. With foil there is a shiny side and there is a matte plain side as well and it's the same with all HTVs. You want to use a green matte when you're working with HTV or iron on. You've already mirrored your design in design space. And the other really, really important thing is shiny side goes face down on your mat. So your colour or your effect side is going to go face down on your mat and the waxy plain side is going to be looking up at you. So I'm just going to turn this around and I'm going to place it onto my mat so it's shiny side down and matte side up. You also want to go in with a scraper or a roller like your fabric brayer and just make sure that it's nice and adhered on your mat. out our HTV and we're actually going to weed it from the back so we're going to start in a corner first and you're just going to gently start peeling and then you can just pull away and you're literally just going to weed the outside first so just pull all the way round and your cut should just guide you so it should just pull away nice and easy. That's the outside we did. You're then going to move on to the inside. Now you should see a cut line, so you want to leave the next line and you're going to go to the next recess area. all your 
your HTV is weeded you need to get your fabric item now you want to make sure you've got it on a really flat really sturdy heat resistant surface I've got my desk and then I've also got a wooden board on my wooden board sits my Cricut Easy Press mat which makes a really good sturdy surface and the great thing about the mat is that it's reflective so it's got a special inside and then this is actually heat reflective so it brings the heat back up into your item so it works great with t-shirts and things like that I've got a bag today and you'll see I've got this little pillow poking out so this is a pressing pillow and it's made out of upholstery foam and you really want to use a Teflon sheet with it mine's just covered in fabric but some items have got a waterproof uh, inside and so it will stick to those so I do recommend using either ironing board fabric or a Teflon sheet in the description I will post a link to the video on how to make your own pressing pillows they're really easy to make and they're really inexpensive I recommend them for use with a easy press or an iron so today we're going to use an iron now I always use my easy press I absolutely love it but when you first start on your Cricut adventure and you first start with HTV, the chances are you don't have an easy press and you don't have a heat press. You are going to start with an iron. So you want to come in and place your HTV design where you're happy. You're then going to want to place a Teflon sheet over if you're using an iron. And this will help protect your HTV and it will stop the carrier sheet from melting as well. Now with your iron you want to make sure that it's at its highest heat setting but that the steam is switched off. So you want to make sure that there is no steam and it's at its highest possible setting. Now no matter what HTV I'm using I always go in for an initial 10 second press and you want to be as even as you can. This is where your pressing pillow really comes into its own and the fact that you've got a flat surface. If you've got a flat surface which is heat resistant and you've got a pressing pillow you'll find it a lot easier to use the iron. I'm going to go in for 10 seconds evenly throughout the design and you don't want to iron, you want to press it down. You don't want to iron like you would clothes, you're just going to press it. You're then going to peel back your carrier sheet and just very, very gently start peeling. Now you want to make sure that this is fully adhered. So you're going to go in with your Teflon sheet and you're going to press for five seconds. Exactly the same as before, you just want to make sure that it's fully adhered to your fabric. The best way to tell if your HTV is fully adhered to your fabric, it doesn't work with all HTVs such as glitters or holographics, but with the thinner ones such as planes, foils, metallics, you should be able to see the pattern of your fabric in your HTV and this is how you know it's fully adhered. So next we're going to go in with the glitter HTV. So we've got the headband and we're going to do the top lip as well. So again we're going to place our Teflon sheet over and we're going to go in for 10 seconds. You then want to remove your Teflon sheet and you're just going to allow it to cool down for about 30 seconds. So we're just going to remove the lip area first and we can then start peeling the bow. We then want to add the eyes in and the bottom of the lip and then again we're going to go in for 10 seconds. Now these are just, sometimes these timings work, sometimes they don't. Your iron is very different, your pressure is going to be very different. I always start with 10 seconds and then if it hasn't adhered I go in at 5 second intervals. Again for our writing we're going to go in for 10 seconds initially 
and then if it hasn't adhered we're going to go in at five second increments I'm going to finish off my writing and then I'll be back with you and then finally we're just going to go in and we're going to press for five seconds on this side as well and then that is our HDV all adhered Thank you. 